people welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking on another video on another day of September the month in which I celebrate my birthday by uploading a new video every day it's always good fun to kind of just share more about my life aside from the workout videos and the healthy eating videos just kind of chat to you guys I should not have worn this jumper it's way too warm to be wearing a jumper I just thought it was a look I felt a little bit a little bit something but now all I'm feeling is sweaty. Did I change? No, it's a look, I'm gonna power through. In today's video, we are talking all about my plants and how I changed from being a certified killer of plants to being a keeper alive of plants for at least 72.86 of the time. And that, my friends, is huge progress. So I'm just gonna tell you how I don't kill them or at least how I kill them less often. You guys have watched me kind of grow up on this channel a little bit. I used to be a student, I didn't have any plants, I'd buy flowers every now and then, but not plants. And when I moved into this flat, I was like, I want plants. You know, the people who lived here before used to have plants and they looked cute, so I wanted them. So I began buying plants. And as I spent more and more of my hard earned money on these plants, I thought these cannot die. These cannot die, I cannot be just you know, just throwing away 30 quid here and there. 70 quid, I think that one was, 70 quid from Ikea. You think I'm spending 70 quid just to bring it home and watch it die? No, not today, Satan, not today. And the first thing that I did was I started finding out what the plants were, like, what are they called? Like, what are you? I know you're cute, but what are you called? And then I take that name of the plant and I Google it. I Google the plants and I read about it. And as I did that, I learned that plants, well, I already knew this from like GCSE, but I learned like in, on a practical level, what that plant needs, like how much sunlight, what temperature, how much water, how much humidity, how much plant food. I would just Google them and you can literally just Google the name of a plant and then there'll be some genius on the internet who will tell you how to look after it. But if you can't be bothered to Google, and um, what I realized was that when you get a plant, that they actually, well, Ikea does anyway. It like tells you about that plant. Oh, this is tough. It just about fits in this. Hang on, let me just, oh, come on. Okay, oh, great, cool. Soil all over my outfit. Okay, so I've dusted it off, um, and you can basically see that there's a little key on the plant box, and it's just got little pictures that are basically keys as to what it needs. So this is helpful, but low-key not helpful, because like, just because you show me the middle drop doesn't mean I know what that means. What does that mean? More importantly, there's the name of the plant, so this is a Hedera Helix. I can Google it if I have any other questions. A good old bonsai tree, she actually came with a manual, and um, this is honestly the first manual that I have read thoroughly, probably in my life <laughs> it comes to keeping that beautifully exquisite like oh my gosh I love her so much she doesn't like sudden temperature change if we were stuck in the cold I would I would give her my jacket is that weird I would give Bonnie my jacket I read the manual I even started following this guy called Heron's Bonsai on YouTube who is just I'm gonna go and see his garden one day and just meet him because he's just the most wonderful soul and I love his videos, they are so relaxing and they just teach me about plants and I'm a new woman, I am a new woman to invest. Now it does not cost a lot of money at all but I basically was just willing emotionally to buy the things that I needed in order to keep my plants alive. Honestly, buying the stuff I need has probably cost me a total of 20 pounds apart from the pots which are a little bit more but per plant you know maybe like four pound for a pot depending on where you get them um but yeah it's just being willing to spend 20 quid on the stuff you need to keep your plants alive so the first thing that i bought was the miracle grow i had no idea how far it would go like i've been using this and i still have it it tells you how to use it on the box you should also obviously check according to your plan tiniest of spoonfuls for one litre of water. And I don't know that I'm ever gonna finish this. I hope I will, because I hope I continue to collect plants. Another thing that I did was to invest in a watering can. I used to just water them like with a cup of water. Thinking back now, I can see why my plants would die. But it just kind of showed my heart towards them. I was not bothered. But getting a watering can makes it so much easier to water them. And that watering can is right by the plant. It looks cute. Um, if I may say so myself. And it just makes it easier because it's got the thin nozzle. So if you can imagine pouring a cup of water into that, it's gonna go everywhere. But with a thin nozzle, it's actually super easy. Getting a watering can for like, what, a fiver or something is so, so worth it. But as I mentioned earlier about humidity, I also needed like a spray bottle to spray my plants. Oh, we're gonna sneeze. <laughs> Bless me, thank you. 
Um, I have very loud sneeze. It kind of runs in my family. My dad has a very loud sneeze, so does my sister. Don't judge me. Okay. It's not for attention either, it's just how I sneeze. Anyway, the plant is used to humidity, so you need a humid environment, which obviously I don't have in a flat. But you can kind of create by just spraying the leaves and stuff with water. So I bought a spray bottle from Ikea. I was like, yeah, I'm going to keep my plants alive. I've got a spray bottle, I'm going to keep my plants alive. I got home, used it, and let me just show... <laughs> let me show you how this spray bottle works. <laughs> I just hit the wall. Can you see that? It is like machine gun fire attacking the delicate leaves of my little plant. Like, you think I'm gonna spray Bonnie with a with an MK45? I don't know what guns are called. But it was just too aggressive. I was not about to like try and keep my plants alive and then kill them with this absolute assault rifle. So what I did was I invested of myself. I laid down a minimal sacrifice to be honest, let me not be dramatic. One sec, I'll just go get it and show you. It's just my makeup setting spray. It gives you the finest mist, um, it's an urban decay bottle. So I poured out my makeup setting spray, I washed the bottle many times and now I have, to be honest, I use this on my hair actually, because it's just water. I just spray it on my hair as well when I more than moisturise it. So it is still good. So I basically just have a very gentle spray. And look at that, that is what I call a fine mist. If you do want to impress someone by making your plants look amazing, spraying this before your guest comes around, it just gives them like a wet leaf look and it is so gorgeous. It just looks fresh. It's almost like a food advert. It's like, wow, healthy plants. So those are kind of the first two things that I did. I learned what the plant needed. I invested in it a little bit. Not really an investment. I just bought some stuff that I needed for it. Um, and then was just making it a habit. Now, honestly, making a habit of looking after my plants has been so much easier than I thought it would be. Like, because I'm so emotionally and financially invested, like, I care. When I drink, you drink. Unless you're not thirsty, because I will not overwater you. And um, so yeah, what I'm gonna do now is just show you how I look after my plants. I thought it would be easy if I just, you know, they're all due a little, or especially that one. I've actually been letting that one get ugly so I can show you how I'm gonna make her pretty again. She doesn't have a name, she's not as close to my heart. I'm a plant mum, but I'm kind of selective over which one I love the most. I think that's okay. So I'm gonna water Bonnie now. It is summer, so I am feeding her. According to the instructions, she doesn't like as much food as other plants so I don't always feed her. I literally put in like the tiniest amount of food there and I'm gonna fill it up with water and water Bonnie. So before I water her I'm just gonna remove the dead leaves from the base of the plant. Now I don't really get this because surely in the wild or in nature like there's dead leaves everywhere so I don't get it but who am I to question the people who literally wrote a manual? I just obey, I don't question. You only question if you are educated on the subject. I'm not. I'm a humble plant murderer. I will do as told. So what I do is I remove the dead leaves from the base of the plant and I just don't let them like decay there or sit there. I'm going to show you the roots so I can actually pick her up and see the roots of the plant, whether they're overly moist or black to see if I've been like overwatering her and stuff. Um, and that's actually perfect, it's ready to be watered, so I'm pretty happy with that. Also, when I bought her, I felt the soil and I felt how it felt. I felt like the moistness of it, so I know when she needs watering, when she's just right. And then, the way that you're supposed to water this plant is that you're supposed to take the plant out, immerse it in water, literally this whole thing, immerse it in water until it's soaked up a load of water and then let it drain off and put it back in the tub. Like that's just not practical. Tip it to the side a bit and I pour the water in at the base. I check back after about an hour and the roots will have just taken up all of that water and I know then that she's not sitting in her own water. <laughs> I was always gonna say urine. I also make sure that I turn her every now and then because as you might have noticed, sometimes you can get water on the actual soil, which is okay. Again, it's okay to get water on the soil. That's normal, it happens in nature, but it does increase the risk of just having water sitting there and then getting like bugs or mold or whatever. So I generally water around the pot and let it soak up that way. And I think it might be time for a repotting because I can see the roots coming out, but damn it. Ugh. Once I've watered her then, I'm just gonna spritz her to get a little bit of humidity. And this is my favorite bit because it makes her look so pretty. <laughs> 
Now although I try and keep my plants where they're supposed to be um, to get the best light temperature etc, sometimes you do just have to kill a plant for the aesthetic. This plant honestly plays a really important aesthetic role in my kitchen hung up there. But obviously when I'm cooking like a load of steam comes up and I've had, I think this is my third plant there. Every plant I've put there has died but I've been happy with it, I've been okay. That's why I'm on 72.86%, it's because you know, I still do kill plants, it's just I know they're going to die. But somehow, this plant, I called him Marty for Marta. So whichever plant is there is called Marty, because they're a Marta. I know they're going to die, it's fine, it is for the aesthetic. But Marty, Marty is surviving. Not only is she surviving, she's low-key thriving. Like, I wish I could show you the before, but she has grown so much, and I do not understand it. I don't, I didn't even check what type of plant she is. Like, I haven't done any of the research for this plant, because I was just like, I know you're gonna die, it's okay, I don't want to get emotionally attached. I'm gonna move on to the plant that I've low-key been allowing to get ugly, so that I can film this video for you guys. I'm pretty sure she's a lily, a peace lily or something, I can't remember. But I did read up on this one, and I have been trying to look after her as I should. So let's, oh, she's very pretty, but as you can see, some of her flowers have died, some of her leaves are browning. She doesn't like bright light, but I do keep her right by the window where the sun is so bright. And um, again, for the aesthetic, because I might be a plant mum, but I am like, more like a dance mom plant mum, if you know what I mean. But what I have learned that people do to keep their plants looking cute is to just cut off the bad bits. I mean, that could probably be a metaphor for life, <laughs> to be honest. I was always super scared to cut anything off a plant because any growth was positive. But actually, if you don't like it, if you don't like its placement, just cut it off and prune it. That's what they call it, pruning it. So, I'm just gonna prune this plant with you to cut off the bad bits and just make her look so much better. So I just go to the base of the bad bit. And I literally just cut it off. I should probably have garden scissors or something, but I don't. Back inside. And then I'm gonna water her and spritz again. I love this plant. Again, she's from Ikea. I um, haven't actually named her, to be honest. Not that emotionally attached. But can you tell? I just love a weird-looking trunk. I really do. It's so, so beautiful. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to pick off some of her leaves. They tend to just fall off when you shake her, to be honest. It's kind of like a, like a self-pruning. Okay, cool. So just none fall off just for one fell off but usually they do but I basically just pull off the dying leaves um in the shop they had loads of dying leaves on them so I don't think that's a me problem I think just generally it's like a high turnover leaf type of business and that is it you guys thank you so much for watching this little video on how I keep my 27 not all pictured I really couldn't be bothered to move them all just for one video thumbnail I've moved 80% of my plants <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video on how I keep my plants from dying. I would say alive. They, they don't look too bad, right? They don't look like they're suffering. I don't think the plant police are going to come and take any of them away. Yeah, if you do like this kind of thing, or if you have any questions about my plants, I will try and answer them. So let me know in the comments. Give this video a huge thumbs up, and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! Now I gotta move all of these back. All that for one thumbnail. Are you having a laugh, mate? <sighs>